Today's speaker is Cynthia Wenemark. She's going to be talking about Unitarian Universalists and the Civil Rights Movement. Cynthia, it's all yours. <coughs> In our Wednesday discussion groups, we've been talking about the evolution of Unitarianism and Universalism and the growing emphasis on human rights and social justice issues from the mid-19th century on. Unitarians and Universalists were abolitionists, they were suffragists, they were advocates for the poor and for the mentally ill. They addressed issues like prison reform and also against capital punishment. In the 1930s, they spoke out against Nazi oppression in Europe. And in 1939, um, Waitstill Wait and Martha Sharp, the Reverend Waitstill and Martha Sharp, um, a Unitarian minister and his wife, um, sponsored by the American Unitarian Association, actually traveled to Europe to help refugees escape from Nazi persecution. In 1961, when the Unitarians and Universalists merged, they were speaking out against the, the oppression of the rights of those who were protesting the Vietnam War and those who were conscientious objector, objectors to the war in Vietnam and also speaking for the rights of poor American, um, African Americans in the South, uh, for the, speaking for the civil rights and the voting rights of poor blacks in the South. Four years later, in 1965, the, um, the Unitarian Universalist Association received an urgent telegram from Dr. Martin Luther King in their Boston office requesting their assistance in Selma, Alabama, where they were having voting rights demonstrations. This came on the heels of what came to be known as Bloody Sunday, when demonstrators for voting rights, predominantly black, were stopped on the Pettus Bridge on their way marching to Montgomery. There was a police blockade, and they were beaten, they were whipped and they were tear gassed. Fifty people were hospitalized. Also injured, among the injured, was a young civil rights activist and future congressman John Lewis. News footage of this event was broadcast on network TV, interrupting a special on Nazi atrocities. Unitarians and Universalists responded to this responded to the call. 20% of all Unitarian universe, Universalist clergy answered the call to come to Selma. Mm. Among them was the Reverend James Reeb, who was a Unitarian Universalist minister, who was martyred within 24 hours of his arrival at <coughs> Selma. He and two other Unitarian Universalist ministers were accosted by white assailants on a Selma <coughs> sidewalk, and he died from blows to the head. Unitarians and uni Unitarian Universalists responded to this to this murder by sending more people to Selma, Alabama. There were more clergy and more lay people. Among the lay people who who, uh, who arrived to help in Selma was was Viola Greg Ruizu, who was the mother of four, and arrived there to help and to offer her assistance and also to offer use of her car if that was needed. And one night she was driving she was driving voting rights activists home after a day of demonstration. And she was ambushed by members of the Ku Klux Klan. They forced her off the road. They, they fatally shot her twice in the head. And her one passenger, a young black man, survived the crash and survived the Klan by pretending to be dead. Four days later, after, after the Reverend Reeves 
after the, after the Reverend Reeves murder, President Lyndon Johnson announced a joint session of, of Congress to announce the Voting Rights Act. Among those invited were, was Dr. Martin Luther King, who declined the invitation uh, to be present for this event so that he could remain in Selma to eulogize the Reverend Reeb. Dr. King stated that his death was the result of a sensitive religious spirit. His crime was that he dared to live his faith. He placed himself alongside the disinherited black brethren of this community. Again, we must ask the question, why must good men die for doing good? Oh, Jerusalem, why do you murder your prophets and persecute those who came to preach your salvation? So the Reverend James Reeves has something to say to all of us in his death. The Reverend Reeves murderers were never followed, were, were never found, by the way. And uh, 49 years on, 49 years on, the FBI maintains an active file on him. So, Amer so members of the Unitarian Universalist Church were still involved with civil rights and with voting rights and with the disenfranchised. But of course, we are products of our culture. Are creatures of our culture, and the same issues that divided a country also divided our Unitarian Universalist congregations. In 1963, at the UUA General Assembly, delegates actually voted against a resolution that would have that would have done away with all racially discriminatory language in its bylaws things were going on within churches as well, issues of segregation. Um, in many places in the South, to have an integrated congregation actually was in violation of state law. And you, you risked being in crosswise not just with, with uh, the courts and law enforcement, but also the Ku Klux Klan and other miscreants as well. And it wasn't just a a building that was going to be under siege, but you could have your house torched, your family could be threatened, this could happen. Um, in 1965, a Unitarian Universalist minister, uh, Dr. Donald Thompson, who was the pastor at the first, you know, excuse me, the first Uni Unitarian church in Jackson, Mississippi, was uh, critically injured by the Klan who ambushed him and shot him, and he was in the hospital for some time. While he was there, the settlement director for the Unitarian, or for the UUA Department of Ministry contacted him and asked him if he might want to consider a more comfortable situation or, more, or a more uh, comfortable climate. And, um, Thompson responded that he that unless the people of Mississippi thought that his presence was going to threaten them, that he would like to stay on in his position. Uh, he felt that if he could continue service after this incident, that they may be able to attract some really worthwhile members. And so stay on he did when he was eventually released from the hospital, and he corroborated with the FBI. Um, Two months later, he did wind up leaving after receiving hours notice of a second assassination attempt by the Klan. Now, the events that I'm talking about that I describe here didn't happen all that long ago. These are fairly recent events. These are not details just pulled from a distant, foggy past. In 1965, my family moved to the Memphis area from Evanston, Illinois. I can remember in the first or second grade looking in the classified section of the Memphis Commercial Appeal and seeing help wanted white, help wanted colored, housing white, housing colored. After our last Wednesday discussion uh, group, I was speaking with one of our members who was recalling as a young adult living in Alabama 
the sorts of divisions that were taking place, the conflicts between people and the splitting of churches. When I mentioned to someone, to someone that I was going to be speaking at my church about UU and civil rights, my re the response that I got was, well, the Voting Rights Act passed. Didn't that pretty well settle the matter? I know, that's what I said. Um, and yet we still find, of course, that there is homophobia and, ra and racism and sexism and xenophobia and weird prejudices of all sorts. And Unitarian Universalists are heretics and activists. And of course, we have nationally, the Unitarian um, Universalist Association has programs um, that affect human rights and, and promote social justice issues. On the state level, many of the congregations uh, throughout the country have, have come together within their state to form statewide advocacy networks. And with the recent formation, of the Unitarian of the UU Just Tennessee UU Justice Ministry, uh, Tennessee has become the 15th such state with that. Oh, by the way, speaking of the uh, Voting Rights Act, recall that it was only last year, in June of 2013, that in the case of in, that in the case of Sh of Shelby County versus Holder that the United States Supreme Court actually struck down Section 4 of the Voting Rights Act. In writing the dissenting opinion, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg wrote that hubris would be a fitting word to describe today's dismantling of the, of, of the Voting Rights Act. I will conclude with a poem. The Low Road by Margie Piercy. What can they do to you? Whatever they want. They can set you up. They can bust you. They can break your fingers. They can burn you with electricity. They can dull you with drugs until you can't walk, can't remember. They can take your child. They can wall up your lover. They can do anything you can't blame them for doing. How can you stop them? Alone, you can refuse. Take revenge where you can. But they can roll right over you. But two persons, fighting back to back, can cut through a mob. A snake dancing file can, can break a conger. An army can meet an army. Two persons can keep each other sane, can give support, conviction, love massage, hope, sex. Three people are a delegation, a committee, a wedge. With four persons, you can play bridge. <laughs> Start an organization. With six, you can rent a whole house and have pie for dinner with no seconds and hold a fundraiser. A dozen make a demonstration, a hundred fill a hall, a thousand have solidarity and your own newsletter, ten thousand power in your own paper, a hundred thousand your own media, ten million your own country. And so it goes, one at a time. And it starts when you care to do something. It starts when you do it again after they've said no. It starts when you say we, and you know who you mean. And each day you be one more. Thank you for your attention.